If you recall in the previous chapter, at the very end, we covered comparison and logical operators. Those operators are most frequently used in conditional statements, with which this chapter is about. With conditional statements, we can, in a way, split our program into paths. And in this chapter, we'll be covering just that. So we'll be covering basically all the kinds of conditional statements we have. To start off, we'll be talking about the if statement. So in Sublime Text, if you write out if, can you press Control Enter at the same time? You can get all kinds of um, all kinds of uh, fillable options. We're going to do the first one, and there we go. That's an if statement, basically. That's a basic if statement. So let me explain what's going on here. So if if basically it at the interpreter asks whether this condition inside is true. By default, it just has true here, but it can be anything, any condition, which we'll see in a second. But basically, whatever is in this block of code right here inside between these, um, in between these uh, curly braces, means that this code will execute if the condition found in here in these parentheses is true. So, what do we put inside here? Basically, well. It, inside this um inside this uh parentheses well it could be anything that returns a boolean value so anything that returns true or false and well we have comparison and logical operators to help us return boolean values typically we use comparison and logic in these conditions right here so let's have let's make a test statement something really simple so like for let's say for c equals 10 uh what else uh, let's see for d equals uh, string 5 and for e string hello so what i did here is i'm going to use a string because uh well you're going to see what's going to happen with that so first, we let's make it a simple if statement. Um, we're going to say c is greater than 5. So this will return a Boolean value because it will compare c. The interpreter will compare c with the value 5 and say, OK, if it's greater than 5, I'm going to have the follow. I'm going to say console log. And inside, we're just going to say c is greater than five pretty simple stuff and all right let me just see our results so let me just go to jibs okay so here we go index just opening the web page got some stuff open from last time here we go all right so yep the condition turns out to be true and there we go so that's a simple if statement right there, and let's 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 expand upon what we can actually put inside these um, parentheses. So that was a simple if statement. Now we can use um, we can basically have we can make these a lot more complicated. We don't just have to have it like this. So let's have something a little more complicated. Let's use the uh, logical operators and also like and and or. So we're gonna have c is less than or equal to five, and let's say d is uh, I don't know, less than five. And notice how I didn't use a string here. I actually used a um, a uh, I used a va number value. So we're gonna see uh, less than or equal to five. So basically, you can have all kinds of. You can pretty much put anything here as long as it returns a boolean value. So like I said last time in the last chapter, um. This operator and operator compares this side and this side and returns true if both sides check out, if both sides are true. So we're going to see c is greater than 5 and d is less than, less than or equal to 5. I know this is really simple, but I, I just, it needs to be simple for the sake of explaining. Oh, yep, and there it goes, and it checks out. And notice how I didn't make this a string. It actually, JavaScript converted it by it automatically, so I'm basically kind of, it's kind of piggybacking off from last, the last chapter where I explained JavaScript, how JavaScript um, converts types. 
you should check that out if you're if you haven't already and uh, well so yeah you can basically compare type you can compare over types but you should be careful with this because sometimes you might not get ex expected you might get unexpected results so let's try actually comparing two strings now so we compared numbers so what happens if we compare D and E so let's say let's say D equals E you get nothing well because that's false it's false this is not true it basically compares if they're both the same value let's try actually saying D is less than E let's oops and you get nothing because you can't really compare strings because strings are really ambiguous you'll see later on when we work on strings how we compare strings together you can either compare them equally so let's actually try that so yeah this actually works because D is a less than or equal to E but because well you could because it measures the string length it doesn't measure the actual string itself when we're doing less than or equal to signs I'll explain that in the chapter on strings so don't worry about that I'm just showing how you can use pretty much anything in here you could use any kind of types you could even use objects and arrays you can use even whatever you want so you can even mix and match for example we are going to have the following so let's have even more complicated um, sort of logical sort of like a logical comparison we're gonna be using like nested I'm saying nested like conditions within conditions so let's do that so if you remember last time I talked about operator precedence is that where that um, anything inside parentheses has a priority so I'm gonna have a bunch of a I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a bunch of comparisons right here so we're gonna have or e equals hello so this is I this is something really sort of really um, simple but um, I just want to explain here what's going on that's to help simplify everything what's going on here I'm going to just explain like this okay so so we have a huge sort of comparison right here and we have basically two sides we have the right and left the interpreter is going to basically decompose the the um, the operation like this so we have a left and right side so it'll get the value of the either side left and right let's say let's divide it first right because it's the simpler side so it checks this condition and since it's true it's true so that's true e is actually equal to hello like we see here that's true and on the other side we have some big thing going on so we have a whole thing in parentheses so what's gonna happen here is that um, we are gonna check everything inside here and then return a value so it's gonna then check okay let's say C is not equal to 5 that means it's true so that side is true this side is also true because D is in fact greater than or equal to 5 so this whole thing will return true because of this and operator so both sides are true in the and operation and that equals true and then once we're done with both sides we finally compare them together with or so or true or true is equal to true and that was, and this result will be displayed so let's do that and you get the result back so you can be creative with these I actually recommend that you don't really act you don't make them too complicated because you'll wind up confusing yourself but um, just so you know that you can pretty much have anything in here all right so we have a statement so we've had statements so far that checked out for true that checked out true right and one time I did something it didn't check out true it was actually false and it displayed nothing so how do we handle that false situation well we have another sort of statement it's called the else statement it basically provides like the actions to take if the condition checked here is not true so we have else and then you have your block of code followed with inside inside these um curly braces right here so 
let's keep going. All right, so let's have a simple example. Let's go back to a simple example. All right, so we're gonna say C is less than five. I'm gonna say C is, we're just gonna fix this condition less than five. All right, so we know, obviously no, this, this is not gonna check out to be true. It's gonna be false. So we know whatever's gonna happen is gonna, what um, this code in here is actually gonna be executed to rephrase things better. So based, so if the condition is false, then the code in the else condition will be executed. I mean, this is to th put things simply, simply, right? So, but um, you may sometimes see ifs by themselves and then the code just continues. But this is just showing how how it how like basically goes in the interpreter. So if 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 the if statement doesn't check out, then the code keeps going on in some other path. And this way, we're defining paths in our code. So this is one path, and this is another path. I guess you can call them. You don't, they're not literally paths. I guess you can say, but I, I like to think of them as paths in our code. So if the code isn't doesn't check out as it should, if if the if the if condition if turns out to be false, we're just going to say console log and it's just a simple string that condition is false. Semicolon, save it, and, and you see the condition is false. So yeah, it checks out to be false. And oftentimes, I just, just, so, just so you know, the condition inside here isn't really it ba it's based on some sort of input or some sort of result of a function and stuff like that. It's not, it's often in real practice, it's not really as straightforward, just so you know, I'm just showing the basics of this.